Hello, my name is Aaron Fisher, and I am the Youth, Livestock, and Equine Specialist in the Department of Animal Science at the University of Tennessee. I am presenting a video study series focused on beef cattle related topics for the Skittlethon. This particular episode will focus on injections for beef cattle. We will talk about how medications are given to beef cattle, including the different types of injections used in beef cattle production and the important information provided by the medicine label. Medications are administered to beef cattle in various ways. One way is through feed. These substances would be mixed into the feed ration to form a medicated feed. A couple of examples of this would be dewormers and ionophores like menensin. Next, it is common for dewormers to be poor on. Another term for a dewormer is an anthelmintic. These products are typically poured down the back of the animal. There are examples for internal and external parasites. Some medications are given orally. This could be a liquid that is squirted into the mouth of the animal or added to the drinking water or could be a bolus administered with a balling gun. There are examples that are antibiotics and dewormers, among many others. Finally, medications can be given through injection. There are different types of injections, but they consist of using a needle to administer the medication through the skin directly into the animal. There are many different medications that can be given via injections like antibiotics, pain relievers, dewormers, hormones for reproduction, and many others. The three most common routes of administration for injections are subcutaneous, intramuscular, and intravenous. Subcutaneous injections are given under the skin. Intramuscular injections are given directly into the muscle. Intravenous injections are given directly into the vein. IV injections are typically reserved for veterinarians. All injections, regardless of type, should be given in the neck region. Subcutaneous injections should be given in the dark green triangle, while intramuscular injections should be given in the smaller light green triangle. Administering injections in other areas of the animal can lead to tissue site damage which is cut away during the harvesting process and decreases the value of the carcass and increases the potential for a drug residue in the meat. One more important note on subcutaneous injections. They should be given using the tinting procedure. Basically, you pull the skin of the neck up, forming a tint with the skin. Then you give the injection just through the skin making sure that you do not go through the bottom of the tent as well. It is imperative to read, understand, and follow all of the instructions on the medicine label. The medicine label includes the following important items, trade name, active ingredient, route of administration, species and animal class, approved uses, dosage, withdrawal time, cautions and warnings, sizes available, and storage requirements. Basically, the medicine label provides all of the details needed to properly administer medications to beef cattle and other species. The trade name is how you know most medications. For example, Banamine is the trade name for Flunixin. Chances are you have heard of Banamine, but never heard of Flunixin. The route of administration is how the medication should be given. For most injectable medications, this will be either subcutaneous or intramuscular injection. It is important to only give the medication how it says on the label. The species and animal class are the only approved animals that a particular medication can be given to. This might be all beef cattle, or only non-lactating cattle or some other combination. The dosage is how much of the medication can be given. 
giving more than the correct dosage can result in a drug residue in the meat. The withdrawal time is the amount of time after a medication is given that the animal must be held before being sold or entering the food chain. Not following the withdrawal time can also lead to a drug residue in the meat. This may be the most important thing that you hear me say today. Doing anything against the label instructions is called an extra label drug use and is illegal. It is also likely to result in a drug residue in the meat and could damage the public perception of animal agriculture. Specific examples of extra label uses include giving a higher dose than what is on the label. This could be thinking that if 5 cc's are good, 10 cc's will be better. Or could be giving 5 cc's now and 5 more cc's 3 days later. It is also an extra label use to give an injection intramuscularly when it is supposed to be given subcutaneously. Another that is all too common is giving a medication labeled only for beef cattle to sheep. It is important to note that this can be done on the order of a veterinarian through a valid veterinarian client patient relationship, but this is the only way this can be done. You cannot choose to do this on your own. When in doubt about anything on the medicine label, it is important to consult a licensed veterinarian that is familiar with your beef cattle herd. Needles come in all sizes. The size of the needle opening is measured by gauge. The smaller the gauge, the larger the needle opening. For example, a 14 gauge needle is much larger than an 18 gauge needle. 16 and 18 gauge needles are recommended for injections to beef cattle. For subcutaneous injections, needles should be 3 quarter to 1 inch in length. For intramuscular injections, needles should be 1 to 1 and a half inches in length. An 18 gauge needle is recommended for most situations but there are times, depending on cow age and size, as well as medicine thickness, where a 16 gauge needle is appropriate. We will finish up with some beef quality assurance basics. A new needle should be used after every 10 animals. This should be reduced to five animals if cattle are wet and dirty. If a needle is bent, it should be discarded immediately never straighten it and use again. This is extremely dangerous as it could break off in the animal. You can see in the microscopic view of needles in the picture how the end of the needle curls after multiple uses. Would you want to be injected with the needle on the bottom right? I know I would not. If giving injections to multiple cattle at the same time, be sure to use a separate needle to withdraw the medicine from the bottle and give the injection to the animal. Never put a needle back into the bottle after using it to inject an animal. Used needles should be discarded into an appropriate sharps container. An empty milk jug makes for a good homemade sharps container. Your vet is a good resource for discarding used needles once the sharps container is full. Regardless of route of administration, only 10 cc's should be given per injection. If more than 10 cc's are indicated, then it should be split across multiple injections. Remember, the animal has two sides of the neck area. We mentioned this briefly before, but it is important to have a working relationship with a veterinarian and for them to be familiar with your beef cattle operation. This is necessary for a valid vet-client-patient relationship, or VCPR. For more beef quality assurance resources, please check out the Youth for the Quality Care of Animals program at YQCA.org. YQCA is a multi-species quality assurance program designed specifically for youth. YQCA certification is required for many regional, state, and national livestock shows 
including State 4-H and FFA livestock shows in Tennessee. There is also an adult beef quality assurance program. For more information, check out the Beef Quality Assurance page on the University of Tennessee Animal Science webpage or reach out to Dr. Lou Strickland, Extension Veterinarian in the University of Tennessee Department of Animal Science. That wraps up our discussion of injections to beef cattle. The most important point to remember is to always read and follow all of the instructions on the medicine label and to consult a veterinarian for any questions or concerns. You are an important player in protecting the food supply and public perception of animal agriculture. I wish you the best of luck as you progress through your beef cattle project. Please let me know if I can ever be of assistance. Thank you and have a great day.